Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Zimmer. I'm back. It's been a while. Uh, I've been working hard on this, uh, but I've been consumed by delays, and I'm happy to finally get this one out, and I call it The Eclipse, Rapture, and 84-Week Timeline. Okay, so I wanted to pull up, I've been showing this for the past few videos. Uh, I'm not going to go over it in detail. I just wanted to make mention that I've, I've now extrapolated, and we're coming to the end of where this, you know, 1.44 1 billion sealed Christians going in the rapture, and then 6.66 billion being left behind. Those numbers will no longer be viable pretty soon. Uh, but uh, Pastor Wright, okay, so let me go over just briefly. Uh, Patrick Wright's wife, uh, late wife, Christina, had a dream in which 725 was there, but no one could find 811, and this was in a workplace atmosphere. And I believe what's meant by that is the world never sees this 811 or 8.11 billion people because the rapture happens and prevents it. Uh, the numbers, though, we're getting pretty close to crunch time here. Um, and I actually plotted this. It's, kind of, it's a linear relationship. And I started taking the data on 9-9-2023 and plotting it here. And we can extrapolate or you know, find out what's going to happen in April and thereabouts. Oh, by the way, I'm on the same track as a lot of the other watchmen, uh, watch women who are talking about the April 8th eclipse. I think that, in my opinion, is it. And I'm going to present a lot of evidence to you here <clears throat> to show you why I think that. And first of all, the, I started the, getting the date on 9-9. The number nine in the Bible symbolizes divine completeness or finality, so I think that's where we're headed with this. And solving for 8.102 uh, billion people gives us April 8th, 2024. So we're still under that uh, divider, that number at which we would have to round up and make it 811. That number is 8.105 billion people, and that, that number where we would start rounding up is April 21st. That would be 13 days after the eclipse. So, and then if we, just for fun, if we want to go out to 8.11 billion people, that comes to May 16th, and that would be about two days before Pentecost, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I just wanted to extrapolate that and find out you know, when we would come to the end of this viability, and it's, it's around the time of the eclipse, or shortly thereafter, 13 days. Okay, and then a few of these things I want to review real quick, because it's important to directing us towards the day and the time of the rapture, actually two viable times. The Hebrew alphabet appears to direct us to look at 1011 three times, so that sent us previously looking at Numbers 1011, and that's where the uh, cloud is taken up off the tabernacle on the 20th day, second month, and second year. So 20th day, second month, second year can be written 2022, and that contains the numbers 202 and 22 overlapping. Nisan 1 last year plus 202 brings us to Tishri 7, uh, last year, and 726 is Harpazo, of course, and then what brings us to the same day is Tishri 4, or 919, the day we had all those signs, uh, you know, the child being birthed, and then the head coming together with the with uh, the body, Virgo, the head being Jesus, and the uh, body representing the church, and then plus 22 days, which is, 22 is the last chapter of the Bible, that's uh, it's a representation of heaven and the river of life. So they all end on the same day. And then Tishri 26, uh, last year, 726, was October 11th. And that, of course, is 1011. So this is uh, comes back to that number again, 1011. 726, fulfilled by the revealing of the birth of the asteroid child. And that's uh, Patrick again revealed that to us. Uh, and then the actual event was 919, the birthing of the asteroid child from Virgo. And these turn out to be dates on the timeline. These are all viable dates that give us day counts. 
So numbers 1011, uh, 2022, brings us to a time, 20202 p.m., and this is the exact time of the eclipse over Carbondale, Illinois, Cairo, Illinois, and Rapture, Indiana. Um, so these simultaneously, these three towns uh, have the same time for the eclipse event. And we, it looks like we have three things, uh, three things transitioning, and that's on April 8th going into April 9th, and actually April 8th starting at sundown would be the transition. Uh, and I think we're, I think God's looking at this on, on his calendar. I think the reason that we were pulling up 2023 in the number pi as the rapture is because that's when all the signs that gave us dates that gave us day counts were happening in 2023. And I think, I think we're in on God's calendar, we're probably still in 2023. And it's not going to transition to 2024 until uh, sundown, April 8th into April 9th. And then that would also be the transition 5783 going to 5784. And then if you want to be really accurate and you want to use the true or the, the most accurate Hebrew year, we'd be transitioning from 5993 to 5994. Okay, so uh, Nishimura and John Golovich, we had that uh, sign on, I think it was September 22nd last year. And that uh, the asteroid or the, yeah, the asteroid 1734, and the comet Nishimura at 1730, the time of 1734, takes us to Luke 1734. And I noticed something rather interesting that if we look at the th those three verses, 34, 35, and 36, it says, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, one shall be taken and the other shall be left. So there's that, it's, it starts off talking about two people. Okay, so that, that corresponds, I think, to the first number of the hour, the hours being given here. If we go to 35, it's two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Okay, so there's another two people, and that would be the two minutes. And then two men shall be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. And that represents the two seconds. So the, I think we're actually given the time of the rapture in Luke 17, and then finally, uh, Luke seventeen thirty seven, and they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, the body, body of Christ, thither will the eagles, or the angels, gathering us, uh, be gathered together. And I thought also that it was interesting that I received this uh, revelation on 2-22-2024. <laughs> uh, anyway, this... There's also a tie-in to a 40-day warning, and this is the sign of Jonah. If we look at 1219, which is three days before the galactic alignment last year, to 48, the day of the eclipse is 111 days, 111. One shall be taken, and it's said three times. 1219, again, to 1222 is three days, one plus one plus one days. February 28th, uh, to April 8th is 40 days, as in a 40-day warning, the, the warning like Jonah, uh, or one month and 11 days. So we have all these counts of 111, and I think it's pointing towards February 28th uh, as a 40-day warning to the eclipse. Okay, now, you may not want to go into this, but I, I kind of have to cover this a little bit. This is Satanism and Aleister Crowley and all that. Just to give you a little bit of a background of why I think America is coming under judgment. And Aleister Crowley, uh, the wickedest man in the world, the Beast 666 is what he called himself. He was an occultist, a magician, and so on. In February 1904, Crowley and Rose, his wife, arrived in Cairo, Egypt, Crowley set up a temple room and began invoking ancient Egyptian deities in their apartment. And according to Crowley's later statements, on April 8th, he heard a disembodied voice claim to be that of Iowas, the messenger of Horus, or Hor Par Karat, I guess I pronounced. Crowley said that he wrote down everything the voice told him over the course of the next three days and titled it Liber 
Alvel Legis, or the Book of the Law, and, uh, oop, no, it's, I didn't know he was in the movies. There we go. The book proclaimed that humanity was entering a new eon and that Crowley would serve as its prophet. It stated that a supreme moral law was to be introduced in this eon. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So in other words, basically do whatever you want, which is counter to the the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments uh, that God gives. And of course, we're not under the law anymore, but if we were, the, the uh, that would be a death sentence if you uh, go against the law of Moses, and that people should learn to live in tune with their will. This book and the philosophy that it espoused became the cornerstone of Crowley's religion, Thelema. Crowley said he wrote the Book of the Law on 8th, 9th, and 10th April 1904, between the hours of noon and 1 p.m. in the flat where he and his new wife were staying for their honeymoon. And keep that word in, in uh, mind, honeymoon, because I'm going to talk about it a little bit later on and Uh, It has kind of a strange twist on it. The book contains three chapters, each of which was, again, alleged to be written down in one hour, beginning at noon on the 8th, 9th, and 10th of April in Cairo, Egypt, in the year 1904. Okay, and, oh boy, got another guy in the movies here. Anton Zandor LeVay. Ah, there he is. Anton Zandor LeVay. He is the founder of the Church of Satan. His professions were American author, musician, and Satanist. He authored several books, including the Satanic Bible, uh, so on and so forth. Anton LaVey became a local celebrity in San Francisco through his paranormal research and live performances as an organist. He played the Wurlitzer uh, at the Lost Weekend Cocktail Lounge. And he formed a group, the Order of the Trapezoid, which later evolved into the governing body of the Church of Satan. According to Faxneld and Peterson, the Church of Satan represented the first public, highly visible, and long-lasting organization which propounded a coherent satanic discourse. In other words, he founded the Church of Satan and he made it stick. LeVay began presenting Friday night lectures on the occult and rituals. A member of this circle suggested that he had a new basis for a religion. According to LeVay himself on Valpurgisnacht, uh, April 30th, 1966. He shaved his head and uh, he says it was in the tradition of the ancient executioners, declared the founding of the Church of Satan and proclaimed in 1966 as the year one Anno Satanus, the first year of the age of Satan. Okay. Uh, 430, 1966 to April 8th this year, the, the day of the eclipse is 57 years and some odd months and days. Strong's G57 is agnostos or unknown, uh, unknown or forgotten. Okay, and there's a tie-in <clears throat> to one of the places. The last place that the eclipse will go over is Mars Hill in Maine uh, when it leaves the United States and then goes into Canada. Uh, and there's a tie into Paul in Acts when he says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious, for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar uh, with this inscription to the unknown God. And there's that use of that G57, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. So basically he's saying, You're worshiping false gods. <laughs> And if we continue with LeVay, uh, he drew from Crowley's work, so I'm trying to show a connection here, because this is all, you know, this is all expanding Satanism over the, since 1904, basically. Uh, works including the phrase, do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law, as well as the ritualistic songs Crowley wrote in Anakian Keys. Crowley had a profound influence on LeVay's book, The Satanic Bible, and in sculpting this impressive charismatic showman in order to popularize his newly founded church and, and uh, fire the satanic movement. Okay, so this, they both got this thing off the, uh, off the ground. And here's the symbol. This is the sigil of Baphomet. And if you know anything about Freemasonry, Baphomet is in their literature. Uh, and also I pulled an image of the Church of Satan off the internet 
and they're they've become international and they've started out in something called the black house in san francisco but this is you know it's been painted all black but then uh, since then it's been demolished and i just wanted to relate a story of mine to you i told you that i'd been suffering some delays and getting this video out i've been working on it for quite a while uh, I happen to notice, I have a picture of it, but I'm not going to show, I don't want to point any fingers or anything, but there is a building uh, that's been recently uh, worked over in my neighborhood, and they ended up painting it black. And the number on the building is 311. Strong's 311 is delay. <laughs> so it, it makes you wonder where the delay is coming from. <laughs> anyway, uh, and this Church of Satan they have their headquarters in Poughkeepsie, New York. And later on, I'll show you uh, the eclipse going over that town. But it's not, it's not a complete eclipse. It's a partial. And then their scripture is the Satanic Bible. And then also there's a, a book written about this, chapter 15, uh, Aleister Crowley and Western Esotericism. And chapter 15, it's titled Satan and the Beast, the influence of Aleister Crowley on modern Satanism. So there's a tie. In other words, this this start, seems to have started out with Crowley, and then it went through LaVey, and it's expanded since. So it's it's become this huge satanic movement. And in the abstract, uh, I don't think I'll read the whole thing. I'll just kind of cut to the end where it says, this chapter also discusses modern witchcraft, Scientology, and Satanism, and determines that Crowley still influences Western spirituality. So it's you know, this it's been growing like a cancer, basically. Okay, so here's the point. The point is judgment, and it, it's there's a tie-in to Noah's flood. Noah preached and warned the people for 120 years before the flood came. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. So that makes Noah 480 years, 4-8, April 8th. Noah was 480 years old when he started preaching and warning about the flood. There were only eight people saved on the ark. Uh, the flood lasted one year, 17 days. And when I show you the 84-week the timeline, there is a span of one year and 17 days in there. So we actually have a connection to the flood in the timeline that I'm about to show you. And then, of course, the rainbow. We know what happened to that, the... the uh, there's a certain community that uses that on their flag. And let's see, uh, Genesis 6, 3, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So he numbers uh, man's days 120 years. So this, this is the judgment, 120 years. The Lord, Yahweh, or the, the, uh, the Lord, Lord is the word that replaces Yahweh in the Bible. Uh, but Yahweh... Y-H-V-H or, um, is four letters, saved eight people out of the flood of Noah. So we have 4-8 again, April 8th. From noon to 1 p.m. on April 8th, 1904, that's Crowley's book, that's when he first started getting his readings, to the solar eclipse, April 8th, 2024, is exactly 120 years. In fact, it's to the hour. Um and it's also interesting that things are done in reversed order. I'm getting ahead of myself. Reversed order in the end times. Uh, Crowley received his book over three days, April 8th, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, three great American eclipses over three days end on April 8th. So this is reversed order. In other words, Crowley started getting his book on April 8th, and then the end of all this, or the judgment, will be April 8th in reversed order. First, last. Eclipse over water at noon, uh, Central Standard Time. Then it's over Carbondale, 1 p.m., Central Standard Time. Remember, during Crowley's time, there was no daylight savings time. So we'd have to look at it from a standpoint of CST or Standard Time would be 1 p.m. The actual time is, is 2 p.m., but if it was Standard Time, it would be 1 p.m. But if we if we want to get really precise with this or really accurate, you'd have to say that uh, he was getting his book in Egypt, and the, there's a, a huge time difference. Um, so it would actually be 120 years 
in Egypt several hours before the eclipse happens in the U.S. So we're, we're looking at the completion of the 120 years and then the judgment falling. Okay, so the 4-8 Great American Eclipse. Total solar eclipse crosses five North American time zones from mountain to Newfoundland time. The umbral shadow is on the North American continent from first landfall at Mazatlan to last exit at Newfoundland for one hour and 43 minutes. Strong's G143 is perceive, but it's also a synonym for judge. It will also pass over five Great Lakes and at least five towns named Grace in five of the 13 states inside the path of totality, and that's Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and Kentucky. The time between totality at both coasts is one hour, 36 minutes. Uh, Strong's G136 is praise, and how do we use that? Praise God, praise the Lord, or praise Yahweh, and we have four letters. And if we take a look at judgment or judgment, two different spellings, it's spelled with an E in the middle in the older literature, you know, from the 1800s, early 1900s, there's a, an E in the middle. But in modern times, we've, we've cut that and we spell it without that E in the middle. So, but both are used. And if we look at the letters, there are four letters on either side of that central E. E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. E5 represents grace. So we've got four, four bookending uh, E for grace, just like we will add four days to each end of the timeline But when I get there. Uh, but we've done this in the past. We've noticed that uh, Jesus' life is bookended by four years at the beginning and four years at the end. We've done that in a previous study. So adding four minutes at both coasts for a total of eight minutes gives us, to the eight to the 136, gives us 144, and then Strong's 144 is judgment. The 821-2017, the first great American eclipse that also went over Carbondale, it occurred at 132044, which is 12044 in Carbondale, Illinois. Noah built the ark and warned the people 120 years until the flood came, and that number is in that time. And 144 is also in that time, which is judgment. So we've got very interesting that the, the first eclipse over, you know, the time over Carbondale is, is telling us 120 years and 144. Now, that number is somewhat subject, subjective because the, uh, the eclipse lingers over each location for anywhere from two to four minutes approximately. So you can sort of choose a time within that, you know, try to choose a time that's uh, between both places where the sun peaks out of either side. So, <clears throat> so there is some wiggle room, that's what I'm trying to say. And if we look at that time, uh, you can see that it, it is indeed in totality at 1 o'clock, 20 minutes, and 44 seconds. So we can see the two numbers there, 120 years and 144 for judgment. This is Carbondale, and this was the first Great American Eclipse. A story in the news that ties into this is shipwreck found 120 years after bodies of crew washed ashore. In July 1904, the steamship SS Nemesis, Nemesis for, you know, the our Nemesis, was transporting coal to Melbourne, Australia when it ran into a powerful storm and vanished. All 32 people on board were considered lost. In weeks that followed, the bodies of the crew members and debris from the iron hulled ship washed ashore, but the location of the 240-foot long vessel remained a mystery until now. The ship has finally been identified more than a century later. The 120-year-old mystery of SS Nemesis and the 32 crew members lost at sea has been solved, according to government officials in a news release. Okay, so we've, we've got the numbers and we've got the name, Nemesis. Um, and 32 crew members uh, can, can mean 32 and Strong's angel, or it can also mean messenger. So this, 
I guess God is trying to tell us there's a message here. This is a messenger G240, uh, 240 foot long vessel. Uh, this is one another mutually. In other words, two messages, I think. 240 is 120 twice. So two uh, instances of judgment. And this may be alluding to the 120 years because we're very, very close. This is on. This was reported on 226, 2024. So we're very close to the, uh, the eclipse and judgment. And this story seems to make a lot of sense. Okay, so I want to show you a few things before I show you the timeline itself, because uh, there are a lot of times, a lot of dates on it, a lot for the day counts. And if we do that, what I just said a moment ago, four days, add four days to the beginning of it and four days to the end, uh, we get, we start at 319.23 and go 20, 21, 22, 23, all the way up to Nissan 1 last year. That's the start of this. And then the end of it would be uh, counting from 1027 all the way up to Halloween this year. So the four days beginning, we get definitions of be made known to recognize a reading, a knowing, to bring, to loose, sail, launch, depart, to appoint, to show. Uh, and then finally on the actual day, Nissan 1, when this starts, showing. In other words, now it's in the, in the process of being shown, proclaiming and announcing. This is announcing the timeline. And then when we get to the end of it, it's very interesting. We see thunder, thundering, rain, snare, gnashing, gnashing of teeth. Uh, so this, this sounds like we're, we're in tribulation at this point, uh, at the very end of the timeline. And 84, uh, oh, did I do the top? Rapture and judgment, the 84-week timeline. And there's that tie-in to the uh, widow at the temple, and we go March 23rd, which is Nissan 1 of last year, to October 31st, Halloween this year. That's the full 84 weeks with elements from Noah's flood, sign of Jonah, wedding, childbirth. And I just wanted to point you to some of the videos that uh, Aaron at Got a Minute is doing. He's uh, picked out lots and lots of places that follow these themes, that follow Noah's flood. Uh, sign of Jonah and so on and so forth with Nineveh and all of that on the on the map of the USA. So you might find that interesting. And okay, so April 8th, 84, indicating 8th of April. And depending on the way that you write your, uh, your dates, 10, 11, 23 is also 726 on the Hebrew calendar, Harpazo, to 1, 3, 24 is 84 days, sign of Jonah. And that's the rapture, but not, that date is not the rapture. I'm just saying the sign of Jonah is, is pointing towards the rapture. And 1-3 was one day before the sun sign in Sagittarius at 9.54 a.m. on 1-4, 2024, uh, judgment at 2.02. So, um, so that that sign to unpack that date 144 means judgment but it's also encompassing 202 and that can also mean uh, a day count 202 days or it can also mean the time on that day on april 8th 202 strong's 954 is beelzebub and that's what i think that's what that sign was all about it's portending uh, Satan coming to power on this earth after we're raptured. And 1-4 to 4-8 is 95 days or three months, four days. And this is another transition, 3 to 4, uh, April 8th to April 9th, or actually April 8th on, at sundown. We go from 5783 to 5784 on God's calendar you know, not necessarily on the, the uh, traditional Hebrew calendar. Uh, three, three going to four, we've talked about that in past video, that's uh, Gimel, Dalet, that's a representation of a man walking towards a door, uh, representative of us going through the door in heaven, 
and that's also spoken of as a door in heaven in Revelation. Uh, so again, we have the 2023 to 2024, 5783 going to 5784, and 5993 going to 5994 if you want to use the absolute accurate Hebrew year. We're also going to show 48, 412, and 415, the 2023 Sun Jupiter conjunctions in Pisces, all at the same time of 144, but alternating PM, AM, PM, and then 415 to uh, the date of the last one to 48, the eclipse is 359 days, and then Strong's G 359 is departure. And then, of course, 144 is judgment. So we get departure and judgment. Now we're going to start, when we look at these eclipses, you're going to see kind of a dual, uh, a dual meaning or dual message. There's a, a rapture message and rest and all that. And then on the other side, there's judgment and fire and all that. So we've got a, all the way through this thing, it seems like there's a dual message going on. More timeline connections. Uh, three to four clue, four eight twenty twenty four to two ten five twenty twenty four is one hundred and eighty days, and I'll discuss that in a moment too. That's that comes from the uh, uh, do angles angles from the uh, New Jerusalem city, one hundred and eighty days, fifty five days represents Christ, and then one hundred and twenty five or twelve Revelation twelve five the child being caught up represents the church. You add them together, you get 180 days. Also, Tishri 3 and Tishri 4 after sunset. So on that day, uh, there's a transition, Tishri 3 to Tishri 4. So I think this is a clue telling us that we're to look for that, we're to look for that transition from 3 to 4, which actually uh, is going to happen on his calendar, Nissan 1, this year. Strong's 69 is watch, uh, keep awake, watch, to be circumspect, uh, and be ready. So this is a warning for us to be ready. 919, which is this, this, the day of all the signs, the uh, uh, child being birthed, the asteroid child from Virgo, and then the head joining to the body, uh, Nishimura to Virgo, uh, body, head and body being joined. 77 days, Strong's G77 means without charge, costing nothing, so salvation is free, and this rapture is free. <laughs> G101, uh, you'll see that day count in the timeline, which means be impossible, cannot be done. <clears throat> so in other words, uh, it's going to be tied to a, a day that's just a sign. It's not it says be impossible because the rapture won't be that day. In fact, one of them already came, which I thought was going to be the rapture, but we spoke about it. It turned out not to be. I think that was 10, 10 11, or twelve twenty nine, which is ten eleven on the Hebrew calendar. Anyway, so when it says cannot be done, it says don't look at this as the rapture day. I wish I'd have known that before. Uh, G177 means uncovered. And you'll see that number, 180, cannot cease, unceasing. And then 202, I don't think the meaning here in Strong's is really that important. It says, be a hearer of the word, or be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. But, uh, you know, so there is a message there, yes, but I don't. It has nothing pertaining to the rapture itself. I think 202 is simply a day count and also a time. 48 to 1031, which is... Halloween is 206 days. G206 is Acheron, which means highest, extreme, and then the usage is the end. So that, that day count is going to point to the end of the timeline. And then 718 is also a date on there, which means to join, to betroth the daughter to anyone is a usage. 2 Corinthians 11.2, uh, the usage of that is espoused. Uh, I have espoused you to one husband that I may represent you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Okay, so there's that's another thing speaking about the wedding. Uh, and it's it, it has a day count uh, that goes back to April 8th. I'll show you that. Uh, John 640 
it says, I will raise him up at the last day. And I think what that's pointing towards, the last day, is the last day of the year. Because this, this is a uh, one-year timeline with all these day counts on it. And then the last day is Adar 229, last day of the year, just before Nissan 1. And Adar 229 is April 8th. I will raise him up at the last day. It makes a lot of sense if you look at it that way. And then Revelation 18.4, here's this dual sign again, where we're looking at, uh, <clears throat> we're looking at, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, that was 18.6. 18.6 is destruction. 18.4 is just simply saying, come out of her, my people. So 18.4, there's an 8.4 contained within that 8th of April. Edge angles of New Jerusalem City. I, I'm not going to go over this in detail. I just want to show you where the origin of that 202 is. And if we look at the city's dimensions, we get 55 degrees, 125 degrees, add them together, you get 180 degrees. Uh, Nissan 1 plus 55 takes us to Ascension Day last year, which is uh, Nissan 1, oh yeah, 155 days. And then if you add 125 days, uh, which also represents Revelation 12.5, the child being caught up. Then we go to rapture, 7.26. Nissan 1 plus 180 days takes us to the quintessential sign day, uh, 9.19, where we have the child being birthed from, uh, the asteroid being ver birthed from Virgo, and then we had Nishimura and Schumacher-Levy, uh, the head being attached to the body, Virgo. And then 180, of course, means unceasing. Then we see signs begin Nissan 1 in 2023. This Now we're, we're looking at the, uh, the timeline. This tells us when the signs actually begin. But these signs are different than the first Revelation 12 sign and all that stuff that happened before because now these signs are attached to day counts and whatnot. So these are, these are different. This is part of a, a day count type timeline. And that uh, signs beginning Nissan 1, March 22nd at sundown into the 23rd, 919 to Jean Golovich, Nishimura conjunction on 922 at 1734. So that gave us the 22 days. 22 is a representation of heaven and the last chapter in the Bible, 919 to 1011, which is 726 on the Hebrew calendar. Uh, 55 plus 125 plus that 22 representative of heaven. We're putting Jesus, the church, and heaven together. We get 202. So that's the origin of the 202. Um, also, Revelation 21:17 gives a wall definite a dimension of 144 cubits. So if there's a wall around it, that means it's keeping people out. And those 144 uh, may represent the judgment of those people without. Okay, so we can look at it in a circle, and it makes a little bit more sense. Three, uh, circle has 360 degrees. If we add Jesus, 55, 125 for the church, 22 for heaven, we get 202. Uh, and then if we take 360 and subtract that 202, we, we're remaining, or we're left with 158 degrees. We can assign all these to the chapters in Revelation. So 5.5 five is Jesus is, uh, you know, declared uh, worthy to open the seven seals. And then Revelation 12.5, that's the child being caught up that represents the church. And then Revelation 22 is a description of heaven and the river of life. And then also Revelation uh, 15.8, which I think represents the the saints, the tribulation, and millennial, and, the, and it talks about the temple um, and the seven plagues, seven angels, and all that. So I don't want to go too much into detail I just on that because I, I'm not 100% certain, but I think that represents the uh, tribulation and millennial saints. Uh, okay, so Orion, we looked at this before. Uh, this was June 12th last year, and June 12th, 612, 
in Strong's is answer. So this is saying there's an answer here. And we looked at Nishimura becoming actually the head of Orion for one day, uh, 8.53, 23 is the time. But I've since looked at this, since I've discovered the 202 time, uh, and it's tied to Book of Luke, that both times actually work. So we have two times, <clears throat> excuse me, we have two times, <clears throat> two times, 8.53, and we have the 202 that will both fit. There's, there's not that much difference. So that still, Nishimura is still the head of Orion during those two times on that day. And this is something really interesting. Is the, uh, I found previously that the time for the galactic alignment last year, part of that huge rapture sign, right? We had a lot going on. It was very busy. Uh, if you do it on the ecliptic of J2000, you wind up with 153.53, I believe, representing the 153 big fish. I did not do it on the ecliptic of date. If you do it on the ecliptic of date, you get 202. Pardon me. I'm having a little trouble with my voice. 1402 or 202. We had two 11-year-long signs. Uh, the first was two annular eclipses over Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we could fit a 153 into both of those. Uh, and also, there was a sign of Jonah. There were three and a half weeks from the 1014 eclipse to the Moon-Venus-Rapture conjunction sign on 11-9 which occurred at 153.23. So we've got 153 all throughout that, representing the big fish or the church. And it seems to be a wedding announcement using the sign of Jonah. Uh, three and a half weeks, sign of Jonah would actually be three and a half days, but you know it, it's representative of that. Uh, and then also the galactic alignments as seen from Jerusalem, Israel, that was 11 years apart, and we had uh, 666 on the one end, and then on the other, 153.53, representing the uh, big fish. And that message also is in the 819, and the, I believe the numbers that we got from Pi. So that's why I kept that number and didn't look any further, but I looked a little bit further, and I found that if you use the ecliptic of date, you get 202 on that day as well. So I think this is just riddled with messages, and it announces, I believe, 202 as the time and the day count from 919. Okay, and here it is. This is, the, this is that mother of all signs or the rapture sign. And you can see in the upper right that I've added that time, 202, if you use the ecliptic of date. And then if you go down in the lower left, in green, you can take that 202 time and subtract the 853.23, which I'm, I'm going to call it a reference time. I think that's, it could be the rapture time. I don't know. You know, but there those two times are very, very viable for that. Uh, but the 853 seems to be a reference time. And if you subtract it, you get 5639. And if we look at 5639 in Strong's, there's nothing there. It's basically just a lesson in tense voice and mood in, from a Greek word study. Uh, so basically no hidden message here. And I think why is because that wasn't the date of the rapture, but it sets up, it's a model for the day of the rapture. It sets up this reference time that you can take and subtract it from the uh, you know, the, the actual time, I believe, of the rapture. Either one, one or the other. And, okay, so now that we've got this 202 explained, let's look at Washington, D.C. in 202, because something interesting happens there. D.C. is the capital of the United States federal district under its constitution. Columbia is a neo-Latin toponym, uh, in use since the 1730s with reference to the 13 colonies, 
which formed the United, and remember the eclipse goes over 13 states. It originated from the name of the Genoese explorer Christopher Columbus and from the Latin ending in IA, common in the Latin names of countries. Incidentally, the path of the to- of totality for the, oh, here it is, April 8th, uh, solar eclipse will pass over 13 U.S. states. Washington, D.C. is bordered by Maryland and Virginia, states whose names have taken together might be interpreted as Land of the Virgin Mary, an appropriate moniker considering all the holy crosses we found distributed across America in a previous video. Further, this seems like a suitable landscape slash harbinger for the child of Revelation 12.5 to be born out of and raptured. Okay, now the interesting thing is that Washington, D.C. telephone area code is 202. And some Washington, D.C. area zip codes also begin with 202. Uh, 20202, that's the Federal Aviation Administration, and I think that's a a sign that we're going to fly soon. 20202 is that time, exactly. 202... Uh, 04, Ford House Building, Uh, that's the budget office, so now we're getting into the money of the United States. 20220 is the treasury, again, money. Uh, 20222, that's uniquely associated with the Department of the Treasury. 20229 is uh, Customs and Border Protection. 20224, that's the IRS. Uh, interesting that it's 1111 Constitution Avenue, and then 20228, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, again having to do with money, the Department of Agriculture. Now we're getting into the uh, the breadbasket or the the heartland of the U.S. Strong's 28 means uh, Hagar, 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 or flight. So now we also have that flying theme. 20230, that's the White House Visitor Center and also Department of Commerce, again having to do with trade or money. 20240, U.S. Department of the Interior, that's the Lands and Natural Resources. And then we have some that begin with uh, 200, and that would be the Department of Energy and Environment. But if you look, it's two with zeros in the middle and then two, 20002. Washington, D.C. area zip codes that begin with 205. Uh, The White House itself, but it has a telephone, area code 202, because it's in Washington. 20585, the Department of Energy, Strong's 85, usages be troubled, get distress, or anguish. And I think that's, uh, that that might be the half of the puzzle or the, the other side of the coin. Uh, for what happens on April 8th, it might affect our government heavily. But here's the silver lining. There is a crystal city right next to it, right next to Washington, D.C., in Arlington, Virginia, which has a zip of 22202. So those are all the numbers that were present in that numbers 1011, right? We had a representation of 202 overlapping, 22. And Crystal City is an urban neighborhood in the southeast corner of Arlington County, Virginia, south of downtown Washington, D.C. Due to its extensive integration of office buildings, residential high-rise buildings, using underground corridors, travel between stores, offices, and residences, it's possible to travel much of the neighborhood without going above ground, making at least part of the Crystal City, an underground city. An underground city cannot be seen. In addition to Arlington's above-ground population, nearby Arlington National Cemetery has approximately 400,000 graves. Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport is also nearby, providing air travel for the living. And then Revelation 21, 9 through 11 uh, says, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife, And he carried me away in the spirit and showed the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Revelation 22, 1, and this again is the the, uh, description of heaven. And he showed me a pure river 
of water of life clear as crystal. So I thought that was an interesting connection to Crystal City. All right, so about that 84, uh, there is actually an 84, if you will, on the path of the eclipse. 84 Lumber uh, was, let's see here, it was American Building Materials Supply Company, founded 1956 by Joseph Hardy, and its headquarters basically are in uh, the unincorporated village of 84, Pennsylvania. So there's actually a town named 84. And... But this is only a partial eclipse. This is not a, a complete eclipse. So, but I thought it was interesting that the time that it goes over, and it, it's at its maximum partiality, if you will, uh, Strong's G1518 is peacemakers. And of course, this ties into, the, into Luke 2, where we have the, uh, the uh, widow at age 84. And the interesting thing here is she w- she had been married for seven years and then was a widow to the age of 84. Well, if you reverse that, remember everything in the end times is reversed, we uh, would be wed at 84 or 8th of April and we'll be married for seven years. Isn't that interesting? Okay, there we go. Okay, finally, the timeline. So, if we look at it from beginning to end, you can see it starts, uh, it's actually announced a little bit before that, but the day counts don't start until the actual Nissan 1 on the left-hand side, and they head towards April 8th as the quintessential day, and then finally the end of all the day counts and the, you know, the whole thing, the end of the whole 84-week timeline is on 1031. And it actually says the end is G206, Acheron, the end. And then if we go back to the beginning, March 19th, it says G319 means be made known. So it's, it's made known, or it's announcing that it's going to be made known. And that starts on Nissan 1, because that's when the day counts begin. And then it's also announcing the end of it. And if you, if you notice, about the first half of it, roughly, is that Aztec timeline. That was now turns out just to be a mini timeline. I didn't know it was going to be that truncated, but it, it's only part of the massive 84-week timeline. And what we got from the Aztecs was the 225-day counts with a three-and-a-half-week count in the middle. Three-and-a-half weeks, of course, representing the sign of Jonah. And at the beginning is Nissan 1, and at the end of all that, is the galactic alignment. And then, I'm not going to go over in too much detail because I did this in previous videos, but we have the three Sun-Jupiter conjunctions, the 8th and 12th and 15th of April. Uh, I showed you before, the 517 was the eve of Resurrection Day. Uh, Let's see what else, 919, the signs in Virgo. Uh, 1011 is actually 726 on the Hebrew calendar. 10.14 10.14 was the last eclipse. Uh, 10.17 was Kreutz in Libra, and that's that ended the sign of Jonah there. We had a little mini sign of Jonah for three and a half days from the eclipse to that. Uh, and then we had 12.29, which is 10.17 on the Hebrew calendar, which means prize. And I thought, you know, since that's that day was the prize, that that would be the day of the rapture. Well, it's, if you look at the day counts, that's actually tied together by the 101 days saying that that's impossible. It's, it's only tying that day in to say this is a message. Uh, but if you add those two 101s together, what do you get? 202. So we've got 202 days from the signs in Virgo on 919, you know, where we ha- actually had the head coming together with the body and the child being birthed. There was 202 day count to April 8th, the day of the eclipse. Uh, so it's interesting because it, it points that out as, you know, as the rapture when all three come together. We have another day that points to the rapture too. We have 12 5, December 5th. There's nothing, you know, no, notable or notable. <laughs> 
notable on 12.5 that happened, but if we count from 12.5, 125 days, we come to the eclipse. In fact, if you notice, there are exactly seven uh, pairs or seven sets of day counts that point directly to April 8th, and it's symmetric. If we start at the top, we see we have a, a 15 weeks, three days, or the 153 big fish. We have, that's symmetric about April 8th, so that's pointing in towards that day, so to speak. Then we have the 101 days pointing, you know, on one side pointing from prize to April 8th, and then on the other side, 718, which we found out was espouse, uh, you know, giving Christ as a bride to the church, uh, and that's 101 days counting in from that side. Then the next set would be a set of 202 days, one coming from the signs on 919, child being birthed and, and head coming together with the body and all that. That points to April 8th on one side. On the other side, there's 202 days from uh, 1027, which is 725 on the Hebrew calendar, which means harpagmos. So it's another form of harpazo. So they're, they're both 202 day counts pointing into April 8th saying Harpazo, basically. And then we have 206 days, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's, if you add the 202, uh, you add four to that, you get 206 days. Um, and let's see, on the left side, it starts at 915, which is Elul 29, which is a day of accounting in the end. I think it's if it's it's part of the Shemitah cycle, and I think the land returns to its owners and all that stuff goes on. Anyway, that's a little twenty nine on one side, and then on the other side, two hundred six points right to the very end, the very last day, Halloween, and you might think that's a bad day because it's you know it's all about ghouls and you know ghosts and whatever. But it actually started out as a good day in the Catholic Church, and it was a day that the uh, the to remember the dead and that All Hallows Eve to remember the dead. Uh, so it was it was actually a Christian holiday at one time. Okay, going on, uh, one eighty days. That's the uh, fifty five plus one twenty five. That's the the uh, bringing together of Christ and the bride or the child, 12.5, Revelation 12.5 being caught up. So we've got a, a pair of those, 180 days. And then we have a pair of 177 days. Uh, 177 is uncovered. In other words, it's being this is being revealed. And also on the right side, if you notice, it's 177 days to the first day of Feast of Trumpets. But if you consider all three days of that, you know, the from sundown to sundown, we get... 178 and 179. So we have uncovered, uncondemned, and endless. Okay, and then for the, the final set pointing to April 8th, we have the 125 days. We just went over the 12.5 uh, on the left, which is Revelation, points to Revelation 12.5, and 125 day count to April 8th. But then let's go to the right. We have another 125 days pointing in. And that comes from 8.11, interestingly enough. And, and 8.11 is there, but it's, the reason it's there is because it's, now it's counting people that are in heaven. This is, uh, at least that's what I think. That's my opinion. <laughs> so anyway, important, important dates that give us important day counts and actually give us seven sets of day counts that point directly to April 8th. And I'm looking this over just to see if I missed anything. But anyway, on the left, uh, there was there were some day counts that started things off that got us thinking about this. You had a 55 days to 517 resurrection day. Then you had 180 days to uh, the 919 signs. Then you had 202 days to 1011, which was 726 or Harpazo on the Hebrew calendar. So you had a you had a few day counts that that kicked us off or got us starting thinking about day counts and then you know that once we're in in that 
mine mode, uh, it was easy to start finding day counts that, that are symmetric about April 8th. But it's all about April 8th. And that's Adar 229, uh, 50, I believe 5783 on God's calendar because he, ha- he doesn't consider the, uh, the new year until Nisan 1. And down at the bottom, uh, one year, 17 days, that's the exact length of Noah's flood. And that's if you include the end date, if you go from Nisan 1 to April 8th, uh, you can count it different ways. If you want to count it from sundown the day before, then you don't have to uh, include the end date. You can go from March 22nd and go to April 8th, and you still get one year, 17 days without including the end date. So either way, either way you do it, you wind up with this Noah's flood scenario. Okay, did I miss anything? No, I think that's pretty much it. All right. The April 8th, 2024 eclipse crosses three countries. Four, uh, April, four, door. April 8th, eight, Jesus, new beginning. And it starts in Mexico, and we're talking about the rise and fall of the Aztecs. That's where we got uh, the 125 and then the 3.5 weeks in the middle of it, sign of Jonah. So that that um, that put us on to that and the Revelation 12.5 child being caught up. And this defines the timeline, which encompasses the pre-rapture signs. So that got us kicked off on that. Uh, then it goes across America, the lower 48, uh, for 8, again, April 8th. The U.S. flag is the only one of the three showing a field of blue. Uranus, the blue planet, means heaven. Uh, That's what it translates to, which is blue as well. Rapture from Carbondale in Little Egypt at 2.02.02 p.m. CDT. At least I think that's when the rapture would happen. We We have, what, two viable times, but it seems this is the most likely out of the two. And then it passes over seven cities named Nineveh, uh, the sign of Jonah. And finally, we have Exodus 4, 8. And it, it shall come to pass, if they don't believe the first sign, then you know naturally, they've, hopefully, they'll believe the sign, the latter sign, the last sign, which would be the last of three eclipses. Then Canada, the generic maple leaf depicted in the flag, was chosen to represent the 10 species of maple tree native to Canada. The leaf contains 11 points, so we get 1011. And 101123 was 726 Hebrew calendar, Harpazo. And it's the end of the first 202 day count. 1222 was the uh, galactic alignment, uh, 1011 Hebrew calendar after sundown and end of the 11-year sign. And then we have the 202-day count, and Strong's G1110 means to be made known. And finally, this passes over a city named Nineveh in Nova Scotia. Again, the sign of Jonah. Okay. Now, let's take a look at... uh, four Vav-like solar eclipses in 2012-2013, and the portion of each path of totality which passes over land appears relatively straight. And we had one of the, only one of those passed over the U.S. Four eclipses resembling the Hebrew letter Vav, only one of which crosses over the continental U.S. Four eclipses, uh, four Vavs would be 6666, and Strong's Hebrew 6666 means righteousness. Vav Aleph Tav over America represents man. Vav is 6. And Jesus Aleph Tav 23 or H 853. 23 is the numerical value of his name. Um, 6, plus, 6 plus 23 is 29. 6 plus 853 is 859. Strong's G29 is to impress or compel. And... That's that sounds like rapture talk, and then 859 is forgiveness and deliverance, uh, forgiveness or pardon of sins. 821 2017, the first eclipse to 48 2024, the third eclipse is 24 22 days, 
and Strong's G2422 is Whom God Sets Free. And this is six years, six months, six weeks, and six days. And I think I got that off God a minute. One of his uh, persons had written that in in a comment. I uh, thought that was rather interesting. If smaller units are added first, then it goes to four nine. If the larger uh, goes to four nine, if the larger units are added first. Okay, and then here's a close up. This was the first of the vo- the four Vav eclipses, and you can see up close that it's relatively almost a straight line. Uh, and this one ends at Texas. This was in 2012. And here's its position if we were to put this on the uh, map of the Aleph Tav eclipses. So we have the Vav Aleph Tav. Vav Aleph Tav, I think all that is is a connector. It's like saying and. It's a connector between uh, two two words. Uh, Okay, so still sticking with that Aleph Tav. If we have three solar eclipses, they cross at three points and you can see those three points there are three crosses and this this is kind of reminiscent of the three crosses uh, during Jesus uh, crucifixion and Jesus of course is the Aleph Tav or H853 and this also corresponds to three huge fault zones one is the Cascadia subduction zone Vancouver Island, Canada to Northern California, then the Balcones Fault Zone in Texas, and then also the New Madrid Seismic Zone, which extends 150 miles southward from Cairo, Illinois. So this this could be one method of uh, judgment that may fall. We may have a huge set of earthquakes. Now, if we use 8.53 as a reference time on April 8th and we subtract that 2.02, 2.02.02 uh, and subtract 8.53 from that, we get 5 hours, 8 minutes, 39 seconds. If we look at Strong's G5839, uh, it has four different definitions and I think the last two are talking about a gift from a sovereign. So if we look at 14, 1435 and denoting a gift, which is also a gratuity, hence of the gift of a sovereign. And then 1394 is what God confers as a possessor of all things. So basically this is saying a gift from God. And that's from the time span on the day of the eclipse from 853 23 a.m. to 20202 p.m. It's saying a gift and basically a gift from God. Now, the other side of the coin, if we look at the day of the eclipse and we only subtract 202, uh, 202, 853, 23 from 202, we get 5 hours, 8 minutes, 37 seconds. G5837 is judgment. Uh, And there are five definitions for that. And it says, or 3633, for example, is a subjective judgment, which has feeling rather than thought. Uh, 2233 denotes a more deliberate and careful judgment, uh, so on and so forth. It's basically saying judgment. And uh, so we have two sides of the coin. We have this, we have this uh, rapture and we have this judgment falling. And this, this is on the day of the eclipse. All right, so before we get into the eclipses now, uh, I want to bring something to attention that I don't know if anyone else has spoken about this or not. Everyone seems to be looking at the start of the eclipse at Mazatlan. Well, there are two Mexican possessions out in the ocean. There's a set of islands, I believe. One of them is called Isla Socorro, and that's almost 400 miles off the coast of Mexico. And then we also have Puerto Baleto. And Baleto is from the root word ballet in French, which means dance. So this, these are look like they're, or at least one of them is portending a, a dance that's about to come. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay, so Ila Socorro, Mexico, uh, it, the eclipse hits that at 10.53.11, and there's 10.11 in there, and there's also a 1.53 in that, and then Socorro itself means help, assistance, aid, relief, so help is on the way. Ila Socorro, uh, Mexico to Little Catalina, this is the full length across uh, land from beginning to end, Catalina, Little Catalina, Newfoundland, is 153 and 23 seconds. So we, there again, we have that 153. Psalm 124, which people are attributing to this year, 2024. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us prey to their teeth, so he's saving us. Uh, he's send, you know, sending like the word Socorro means help. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Uh, the net is torn and we have slipped away. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And again, the the name of our Lord has been replaced by, or Yahweh, I'm sorry, has been replaced by the word Lord in our Bibles. But the word of the Lord, again, there's that four-letter word. And we've been using that in uh, seeking out these these times and these dates uh, in the in the timeline. Okay. Uh, there's also something interesting that happens the day before the eclipse. If you notice, we have an occultation of Venus by the moon. And this is at the time of 8.53.23 a.m. from Mazatlan, where the eclipse is going to start on the mainland. Uh, and I thought this was rather interesting. Why why do we have the moon occulting Venus the day before the eclipse at the time of 8.53.23? So just when you're getting ready to accept 2.02.02 as the time of the rapture, then this comes in and it marks off 8.53. So you see why I have some confusion? I've got two different dates and I'm, I'm wondering which one is the actual rapture? Uh, is this simply a one-day warning or is this telling us to use this as a reference time, the way I just did in, in subtracting from 202. Uh, I don't know, it's rather interesting. Okay, so, oh, going back just for a sec, I just wanted to make note that you can see in the upper right in the inset, the uh, sun is right at the band um, of one of the fishes in Pisces, so it's as if it's going to cut the band and loose one of the fish. And if you look at a close-up of that uh, in the inset here, you can see the sun is right at the band. And I can just read it. Sun at the band of, of Pisces, followed by the moon, 4-8 at 8.53.23 a.m., Mazatlan, Mexico. The total eclipse begins at 9.38.44 a.m. Uh, so this is, this is well before, in fact, about 44 or 45 minutes before the actual eclipse uh, begins, we see this, we have this timer, we have this, we have uh, uh, the sun looks, looks like it's clipping the band of one of the fishes where it's at that point. If you look at Strong's 44, it means hook, 45 means anchor, so we have these, this maritime type of you know, setting or this fishing trip type of setting. Uh, like Jesus is getting ready to go fishing, 853, Jesus, hook and anchor. And you, th one way to look at this is that the sun is there first, cutting, cutting the band and loosing the fish, you know, possible rapture at that time before the moon gets there. Because if you remember, uh, the moon, a solar eclipse, you know, by the moon, a solar eclipse is generally taken to mean a bad omen. So that would be, you know, that's, that's more uh, associated with judgment. So is, could it be that the sun does the, the first bit of, of work and looses that band at the rapture and then the moon comes in and it signifies judgment? So that's one possibility. And then the other possibility, of course, is that once they come together and as you see in the bigger picture, uh, you'll see the moon and the sun right at the band at 14.2.2. So that would be at 2.02.02. You know, that could be the rapture. 
Uh, and then at that point, we also have uh, all the planets lining up in the field of view, which I thought was interesting. And then that devil comet, with it, which is periodic, 71 years. Ponds, uh, what is it, 12P, Ponds, Brooks. Ponds means bridge. Brooks means water or small stream. So again, uh, you know, this this uh, crossing over type thing, three to four, uh, going through a door or crossing a bridge over water, that type thing. Um, anyway, okay, so that's, anyway, that's why I'm divided on that. You know, we have two times that both, you could make an argument, are very viable for the, for the rapture. Okay, let's begin. This is Ela Sikora, uh, Sikora meaning help. And this is at 1053.11. So you have, and again, these are, are sub, subjective times. You know, there is some wiggle room in there because the eclipse will linger for anywhere from two to four minutes roughly over any location. And 1011 is in there. And then we see 153 like the big fish. Then Puerto Boleto is another island just off the coast of Mexico. It passes there at 11.06 a.m. And 11.06 is purpose, opinion, consent, uh, judgment. So here we have that dual side of the coin. And then number 11 in the Bible can symbolize disorder, chaos, and judgment. Mazatlan, this is where it first hits mainland. Uh, 10, 11, 10, I'm sorry, 11, 10, 11 a.m., so we've got a 10, 11 in there in both directions. And also we ha have it at 18, 10, 11 UTC. The number 18 in the Bible means bondage. So we've also got this symbol of slavery or bondage coming. Uh, interesting that we're going through Little Egypt later on. Uh, 11, 10 is nostos, known. And 10, 11 is to take counsel, deliberate, and determine so there may be some decision-making in here as the uh, eclipse is moving, perhaps. Perhaps the, this is pointing towards 20202 as the actual rapture time because there is counsel or deliberation being made, judgment being made beforehand. El Salto, uh, this is at 12, 12, 12 p.m. El Salto means the jump. Durango means water town. And then 1212 in Strong's is clear, evident, manifest. And then Revelation 12 could be a, 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 you know, a reference to Revelation 12. Torion, Torion at 1219, and that means large tower. Uh, Koahia, possible meaning flying serpent, a place of many trees, and another reference to serpent. And in Genesis 11, men rebelled against God and built the Tower of Babel, bringing judgment. And then finally, Strong's G 1219 means public, publicly. So this is being made, at this point, the public will know. Allende, Allende means on the other side. And this is anywhere from 1227 to 1230. Uh, Strong's 1227 is to look through, see clearly. Um, 1228, devil, false accuser, slanderer. 1229, to publish abroad, proclaim, so and give notice. And then 1230 is to go through. Piedras Negras. This is at 1329. And would be 1.29 p.m. Piedras Negras means black stones, and it's named from the coal deposits. Uh, G, 1.29 means blood, and blood as especially as shed. So this, again, this is symbology of judgment coming. Now we're into the United States, and we're right at the border. This is Laredo, U.S.-Mexico border city at 13.29 or 1.29 p.m. Laredo, the etymology of the name Spanish town Laredo is unclear, but some scholars say the name stems from Glaritum, which means sandy, rocky place. Other state Laredo stems from a Basque word meaning beautiful pastures. So now we're, we're seeing the United States as beautiful pastures, perhaps. 
Also, Laredo might also stem from the Latin Lareda, which means gull. And again, 129, there's that time, which means blood, and blood is especially as shed. And this one is a partial eclipse. Um, we can actually get a better view of a border town from Eagle Pass. And Eagle Pass is also a U.S.-Mexico border city. This is a total eclipse here. And there's a kind of a scary message in this one. 1330, this is 1.30 p.m., Eagle Pass, in and the county seat of Maverick County, it borders Piedras Negras. Uh, Maverick, an or unorthodox or independent-minded person. And this, what does this make you think of? Revelation 18.7, which is where, uh, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And we have G130, which is shedding of blood, another indication of judgment. And, okay, so if you look in the red there, I have Revelation 18.6, pay her back double. And 18 times 6 is 108 days, which is the time from 1222, which was the rapture sign, to 48 to the eclipse. So this is a direct day count from the rapture sign to the rapture, what we believe is the rapture day. And then finally, uh, from Revelation 18.7, section 187 of the California Penal Code defines the crime of murder. And of course, America, a lot of people have been saying that we've killed over 60 million of our children through abortion. So anyway, Uvalde, Texas, Oops, sorry, went too far. Eh, Uvalde, here we go. Uh, 133149, Uvalde, Texas. So now we're starting to go inside of Texas. Uvalde is known as and has been called the honey capital of the world, and I think that was from a previous World Fair, probably around 1905, something like that. And Strong's G131 means to lose blood. Strong's 3149 means the breast. So now we're having this picture of honey and breast or milk, honey and milk. So this is possibly a reference to America as a land of milk and honey. Okay, here it is. The promised land, is this the U.S. heartland? If we look at Numbers 14.8, it says he will bring us into this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And... In Leviticus 20:24, 20, it says, But I said to you, you will possess their land. I will give it to you as an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. And then we have uh, Exodus 3:17. I'll bring you up out of affliction in Egypt into a land of flowing with milk and honey. But in this sense, I think it's bringing us out of little Egypt into heaven, which is a land flowing with milk and honey in that sense. Exodus 3:8. Uh, he will rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and bring, again, bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, if you go back to Le Numbers and Levit Leviticus, look at the numbers, and there's a 4 8 in one of them, and then there's a 2024 20, in the other. 4 8 2024. 20, I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> Uh, and that's, I didn't pick that order. That's just the order that I pulled those out of there. And you can see on the right, uh, <clears throat> these are from two stories. Deadly explosion and fire at Texas dairy farm claims 18,000 cows. And, uh, and then also the lower, lower right, 2024 Uvalde Honey Festival. Strangely enough, this is on April 5th and 6th this year. So that would be just a couple days before the actual eclipse. They're going to have their honey festival. Okay, next one, Utopia, Texas. Uh, this is anywhere from 1332.53 to 1333.53. So that's, we've got a 153 in both of those numbers. Again, this is subjective. Uh, you know, I just found that these numbers will fit during the total eclipse. Utopia, an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. 
And Strong's 1332 is lasting two years, two years old. Now we're back to a reference of the killing of children, Matthew 2.16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and he slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, uh, all the coasts thereof, from two years old. And there's that reference, 1332 and under, according to the time which he diligently inquired of the wise men. And then Strong's 1333, again, is two years. Uh, It has been two years since 2022, the code in Numbers 1011. Okay, Comfort. Now we come to Comfort, Texas. Um, 1333 to 1344. It's about the same time as the last place, and we can see the 153 in there again. Comfort is a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. Uh, And then John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. And then, of course, the uh, Holy Ghost removed implies no more comfort in the world. This is at the time of the rapture. So we're looking at all this, you know, milk, milk and honey and comfort, and it looks, there's the theme of blood and, and being this being taken away and all that. 1333, two years. It has been two years since 2022, the code in Numbers 10, 11. Um, Strong's thir- uh, 1334, tell, declare, show. And then Austin, Texas. Here's, a I think, a different message. Uh, 1337, 137 p.m., Austin means great or magnificent, uh, probably the root of ostentatious. Uh, G Strong's G, 1337, divided into two C's, dividing the C. Now we're getting into a theme of, you know, we, we had judgment and rapture, you know, safety and destruction, uh, two sides of the coin. And now we're getting into this uh, dividing, you know, this theme of dividing, dividing those up. Strong's 137 is Anon, or Springs, place near to Salim in which John was baptized. I'm not quite sure what that has to do with it unless we're talking about dividing dividing the sea or dividing the waters, the many peoples. Um, again, uh, judgment, you know, one, one side is saved, the other side is not. Temple, Texas, okay, 1338 to 1341. Temple is a building for religious practice, a city in Bell County, Texas. And I'll go over that story in just a moment. We've heard about that in the news recently. Strong's 138, to choose, to take for oneself, choose, prefer. Uh, Again, we get into that dividing or that judgment. 139, choice, opinion. 1339, set apart, make an interval to intervene. 140 is choose, choose. to belong to a sect. So I'm not quite sure if this is God choosing, if he's judging, or if this is a warning to us to make a choice at this point because it's, you know, we're at the last seconds. Uh, could go either way. 1340, confidently affirm, constantly affirm. 141, causing division. Here's this division again, dividing up. Uh, 1341, righteous judgment. So that that may be the intention here is the the dividing up or the, uh, you know, the, the sheep from the goats, so to speak, righteous judgment. Fort Worth, Texas, 1342 and 142 p.m. Fort Worth, a name implying strength and worthiness. Uh, Strong's G142 to raise up, to take up, to lift. That sounds like rapture speak. I raise, I raise, lift up, take away, remove. And then Strong's 1342 is correct, righteous, uh, by implication, innocent, just especially. So here's this righteous and innocent, and then this theme of raising up. So this this seems to be uh, pointing to rapture. And Dallas, Texas, Dallas can mean wise, uh, but the time is 144, and that can mean judgment. 
Uh, but it, this, the usage of it is in moral discernment, so it could be a judgment of you know, sheep and goats again. 1344, to show to be righteous, declare righteous. Commerce, Texas. Okay, this is an interesting one because this, this is, uh, you know, this denotes trade, U.S. trade, either internal or external. Commerce is a large-scale organized system of activities, functions, procedures, institutions that directly or indirect, indirectly contribute to the smooth, unhindered distribution and transfer of goods and services. Where have we heard that before? On a substantial scale, commerce consists of trade and aids to trade taking place along the entire supply chain. And that's already been interrupted at one point with the, you know what. Uh, 144 is judgment again. 1344 to show to be righteous, declare righteous. 145 is uh, senses or judging. 1345 is an ordinance, a sentence of acquittal or condemnation. Okay, so again, we're, we're looking at judgment, both sides of the coin, sheep and goats. Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock makes me think of Jesus, the rock. So Little Rock, this is 1353 or 153 p.m. Uh, Little Rock, <clears throat> excuse me, Little Rock hosts the play Jesus Christ Superstar, March 1st through 3rd, 2024. It's their 50th anniversary. I thought that was kind of neat. We are the 153 Big Fish and Little Rocks as followers of Jesus. Strong's 144 again is Judgment, 1344 to show to be righteous. New Madrid, okay, this makes you think of the massive earthquake. New Madrid, famous for the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. Uh, G159, one of the times, is author, and we know who that is, that's God. Uh, G200 means locust, and there was a, is a double brood of cicadas in the news that are set to emerge April 2024. Isn't that right on the, right on the head, the uh, head of the nail? 140, choose, and then 1402, become servant, bring into bondage, be under bondage. Here's this slave uh, imagery again, given, make servant in bondage. And naturally, the people that are left behind during the, the time of the tribulation will be in bondage because they have to serve the Antichrist. Uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Standard Time was the reception time of Crowley's book. Okay, so there's a, you know, since this is 2 p.m., it would be, uh, we look at 1 p.m. Standard Time would be the time of the reception of Crowley's book. The number 14 in the Bible means deliverance. So this 1,400 time is deliverance. And 1,400 to 402, four, four, I'm sorry, 1,400 to 140202. So we're looking at 2 o'clock to 20202. And this is one of those three that have that time. This is Cairo, Illinois. Cairo is analogous to Cairo, Egypt, where Crowley claimed he received the book of the law. And again, we have 200, which is locust, 140, which is choose, 1400, which is servile, there's that bondage, uh, 1402, bring into bondage, so we have this uh, bondage and uh, slave imagery, and the number 14 in the Bible means deliverance again, and then 2.02.02 p.m. CDT, Central Daylight Time, is this the rapture time? It's starting to look very much like it is. Carbondale, Illinois, this is another one of those three with the same time, and then we could just, uh, Carbondale crossing point with August 21st, 2017 eclipse, and which, you know, the first one was speaking of judgment, and this one again is the locust, chew, servile, and, and so on, uh, same imagery, and then rapture, Indiana, and this is almost the same time, but this starts off at 20202, and then it goes to 20402, so it's offset slightly. Uh, Rapture, an unincorporated community in Harmony Township, Posey County, Indiana. G142 means to take up, take away, take away with, lift up, bear. So there's Rapture, speak again. 1402, uh, becoming servant, going into bondage. 
Uh, 143 is perceive, as in understand. 1403 is feast. And this I thought this was interesting. Feast or banquet, like the wedding supper. <laughs> and it's associated with the town of rapture. So this really interesting. The other side of the coin, 144 is judgment. And 1404 is dragon, as in a great serpent or name for Satan. And again, this is 14 in the Bible means deliverance. And this is... This has the time of 20202 p.m. CDT, one of the big three. And then we have Lindy, uh, Liberty, Indiana, and this is at 1509 or 309 p.m. Liberty, the quality or state of being free. 159 again is author. Uh, 1509, if not somewhat, I'm not quite sure how that fits in. Uh, and then 309, recovery of sight. Now, this is interesting uh, in terms of liberty because if, uh, well, back in, the, uh, back in the garden, the, Dr. Barry Aw does this a lot better than I do, but it, it's, uh, we lost our sight. We couldn't, we couldn't, we didn't have the spirit within us, so our sight became very limited, and they, and Adam and Eve, I think, got very, distressed because they could no longer see as far as they used to. Well, here's the reverse of that. Here is the recovery of that sight with the, you know, the giving of the Holy Spirit with God being able to see further. Okay, and then this is interesting. Akron, Ohio. Akron, we found, was the end. Uh, 15, 15, 15. Uh, to 1516. Akron is a city in, and the county seat of Summit County, Ohio, fifth largest city in Ohio, and Strong's G206 again is the end. Uh, Strong's 1515 means one peace, quietness, and rest. 1516 is peaceful. And then John 3, 15 to 16, of course, is that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Uh, and then the number 15 in the Bible means rest. Uh, Parma, Ohio. This is kind of interesting. 1516 to 1516, 33. 316 to 316, 33 p.m. If we're off military time. Parma, Ohio's seventh largest city. Strong's G1516 means peaceful. Uh, it also uh, look, makes us look at John 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then 26 is the numerical value of the name Yahweh. And 33 is, where am I seeing that? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the seconds. That's where that's coming from. 26 is the numerical value of Yahweh. 33 is the age at which Jesus was crucified, died, and rose. And the number 15, again, means rest. And there was an interesting story from this. In fact, I think I may have even seen this years ago. Uh, but there's a guy named Bob McGuire that wrote a song called Moon Over Parma. And here in the picture, he's getting the shepherd's crook on Big Chuck and Little John during its new talent time segment. And the song was offered for free as sheet music to those who wrote in to the show requesting a copy. And I thought that was uh, kind of cute that they they were giving that uh, song away free, just like the, you know, uh, salvation is given freely. Uh, okay, moving on to Liberty Township, Ohio. That's at 1517 or 317 p.m. Liberty is the quality or state of being free. 317 is necessarily uh, by way of compulsion and by force, unwillingly by force, necessarily. Um, there, there may be something fitting in there by, because Harpazo is to be snatched away by force. So maybe that's the, the part that applies. Uh, 1517 means to make peace. And then, of course, John 317 is for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And we're still in the 1500s. 
So we're looking at 15 meaning rest. Erie, Pennsylvania, 1518 to 1520. Erie is known as the Gem City. And there, there's an extra biblical account where the, some fellow asks an angel, you know, why so few get saved? And, and he tells him that they're, you know, like precious stones or gems. Uh, anyway, there was, I, I thought, I can't remember where that was. I think that was in Book of Enoch or something like that. But anyway, there's more references to it. And 1518 means peacemakers. 1519 means two or into. And then 1520 means one. So keep that progression in mind. Peacemakers into one. Because uh, that theme comes up again. John 3, 18 to 20, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Um, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Where am I going? (laughs) Malachi 3, 17, 18, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, here's a reference to gems, jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Uh, then shall he return, and then so on and so forth. I don't need to read the whole thing here. I just wanted to make the point that we're like jewels. Zechariah 9.16, The Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his hand like jewels in a crown. Okay, so we've got Erie, Pennsylvania, that's peacemakers into one. In other words, one with, you know, the body and the head come together. We're one with God. And, okay, so we're now we're at Niagara Falls, New York, and this is a U.S.-Canada border feature. At 15.20 or 3.20 p.m., Niagara Falls, a group of three waterfalls formed by the Niagara River, Horseshoe Falls, American Falls, and Bridal Veil Falls along the U.S.-Canada border. The falls are a popular honeymoon spot. Okay, so there's that, uh, there's that uh, tie-in to honeymoon that I was talking to you about earlier. And Strong's G320 is recognition, and, John, and Strong's G1520 is one. So the last place, Erie, we looked at into, you know, the peacemakers being made into one. And then uh, here at Niagara Falls, the definition of 1520 is simply one. And this is a, looks like a honeymoon (laughs) for one. And you notice in Star Trek, there was a, the way to Eden, I thought it was interesting that there, um, uh, their value or their their uh, saying was one. Poughkeepsie, New York. Okay, this is a partial eclipse, and this was, remember, uh, the Queen City of the Hudson, but it's also the headquarters of the Church of Satan, and I think that's probably why this is a, clearly a partial eclipse. Um, and it means, 327 means to seek carefully, 1527 means severally usage one by one. I'm not quite sure how that is. Judged one by one, perhaps? I don't know. And then the last place in the U.S., just before the eclipse leaves and passes into Canada, is Mars Hill, Maine, 1533 p.m., and that's at 333 p.m. Mars Hill eclipse leaves the U.S. After this point, 333 is behold or consider, 1533 is bring, bring in, or lead. In Luke 11, 4, uh, it's part of the Lord's prayer, and it says, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Um, okay, so that, that leads us, or gives us, the, the word temptation, which ties us into Revelation 3, 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Okay, Alberton, Prince Edward Island. So now we're going into Canada. And this is interesting because if this is indeed post-rapture, 
it's got to be one of those times, I'm, I think, <laughs> 853 or 20202, right? So this would be post-rapture, possibly, uh, at 1637 or 437 p.m. And then Alberton Service Center for Local Fishing and Farming Communities is located in Prince County, Prince, the Prince of the Air, Prince Edward Island, one of the 13 provinces and territories of Canada, nicknames Garden of the Gulf, birthplace of Confederation and Cradle of Confederation. That word Confederation is interesting because there's, what is it, a, a con- Confederation of Ten Nations or something that takes place in the uh, time of tribulation. Anyway, 437 is to behave like a man, to play the man. So there's... Uh, could that possibly be the serkin, serpent? I'm sorry, behaving like a man. And I don't know what olive oil has anything to do with that. Uh, but if you look at the flag of Prince Edward Island, there's a dragon on it. So I thought that was interesting. Meat Cove, Nova Scotia. And this is kind of stuck out into the ocean there, into the uh, one of the bays. Meat, Meat Cove, rural fishing community at the northern tip of Inverness County on Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Island. And 440 means coals of fire. And 1640 is smaller or less, poorer or inferior. And then again, we have this dragon imagery on their flag, Nova Scotia. Harbor Buffet, Newfoundland. Uh, 7.15 or 5.15 p.m. <clears throat> this is a partial eclipse at this point, but I thought this was interesting because it, it makes me think of the wedding supper, or the, the harbor buffet, the buffet or uh, wedding supper of the lamb located on Long Island, inner Placentia Bay. It has a deep sheltered harbor. In anatomy, Placentia translates to placenta. And where, where do we have the placenta? That's after the birth, right? This is called the afterbirth. So it sounds like at this point we're already after the rapture. The settlement was abandoned in 1967. However, reunions in summer are frequent. It appears on the list of ghost towns in Newfoundland and Labrador. 515 is count worthy, think worthy, think good, desire. 1715 is before, in one sight, uh, against, in sight of. Uh, in the presence of so you know is could this be post post rapture or is this imagery leading up to the very end of the uh the eclipse is the rapture i'm not certain it sounds more like it's post rapture because of the placentia bay or placenta little catalina okay now here now we're getting to the last place or one of the last places that the eclipse hits before it leaves land. And it kind of hits two spots at the same time. There's an island also that it hits. Uh, Anyway, Little Catalina. uh, Catalina means pure. Little Catalina at the mouth of Trinity Bay. Trinity, there's the Trinity. It's one of the last villages the eclipse will pass over as it leaves land. Catalina means pure. 514 means worthy, meet, uh, due reward. 1714 means burn up, uh, set on fire. 515 is count worthy, think worthy, do good, or think good, sorry, desire. 1715 is before, in one sight. Uh, 516 is worthy, uh, after a godly sort. Uh, 1716, to spit upon, and, and I spit upon is the usage. Could this possibly refer to those who have rejected Christ. And then 5.7, now this is the most interesting. 5.17, invisible, unseen. And then 17.17 is manifest, visible or comprehended. And I think in this case, probably comprehended. But anyway, this invisible and manifest, this sounds like the rapture. Uh, But this is at the 17.17, this is at, a, at the partial eclipse. This is at the end of it all. When, Just when the first sliver of sun starts to show through at 17, 17, 17, right at the very end. And then the other place that's very similar to that is Bakalu Island, Newfoundland. 
that's the same time, 17, 17, 17, and it's a partial eclipse also. This is just as it, it's starting to wane and leave uh, land. Bakalu Island, an uninhabited island at the northern extremities of Conception Bay. Bakalu means codfish. There was a ghost ship in 1884. There's that number again, 84. The merchant brig Resolvin was found abandoned in the waters off Bakalu and Catalina, Newfoundland and Labrador. The fate of the crew is unknown. In 1953, now this is about the lighthouse, 153, a light mounted atop a wood pyramidal tower was added to the southwest station. Today, a white flash, could this be what the rapture is like, is a white flash? Who knows? Every six seconds is shown from a square skeletal tower located near the original lighthouse. Again, 517 is invisible, 1717 is manifest. So calculations using the time provided, 853.23 and the, from, the visit, from the Venus occultation on 47 and the previous uh, places that we found that in, in uh, uh, scripture and in the uh, signs in the sky and whatnot. And so from the last eclipse, total eclipse on land, we can take the time at Little Catalina, 17, 16, 34, and then subtract the 853, 23 at Mazatlan to get 3 hours, 53 minutes, 11 seconds. If we round down, we get 353. And Strong's G353 means take up, receive up, take, take in, or take up, or raise. And then partial eclipse as it leaves land, uh, 17, 17, 17. If we sub and uh, also the time at Bacalu, Little Catalina and Bacalu, uh, subtract 853, we get 353.54, and we can round that up to 354. Strong's 354 means receive up, a taking up. So even in the, in, even in using this reference time of 853, we still get this rapture, rapture talk or rapture speak. The number 17 in the Bible symbolizes overcoming the enemy and completion. It also signifies perfection, new beginnings, and victory. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, I spoke about this once before, but I thought I'd bring it up just because there's uh, <coughs> some interesting imagery in it. Uh, Trump case and wedding fire. Is this a prelude to the rapture? Autumnal equinox in 2023. September 23rd at 2.50 a.m., and then there was a time of 6.50 UTC. 6.50 is a defraud, and then there was a story that came out in, on 9.26, three days later. Judge rules Trump engaged in repeated fraud, effectively deciding $250 million civil trial. <clears throat> then we had another story on the same day, at least 100 people dead as fire breaks out inside wedding hall in horrific tragedy and a wedding party in Iraq has ended in tragedy for at least 100 people have been killed, another 150 people injured, fire, firing, a, or sorry, following a fire outbreak. Um, so if you add those two together, you add 100 and 150 together, you get 250. Uh, 250 is aloes, and the way that's used is in John 19.39, this is uh, Nicodemus getting aloes, about a hundred pound weight, to uh, for the burial of Jesus. And okay, so what uh, basically what I get out of this is the dual message: Trump and wedding. That means rapture, and then fire and death, judgment. And the the two fifty, you know, being in the six fifty, also being in the time, you know, tells us that there's probably a message message hidden there, and that's probably it. Dual message. Okay, so here's a clearer dual message <clears throat> from the Beirut explosion and the two weddings on August 8th, I'm sorry, August 4th, 2020, uh, 4th of August to April 8th this year is 1343 days, uh, 1343 means righteousness, okay, so it's all about righteousness. 
And then also, if we go from August 4th to the halfway point, the approximate halfway point at June 6, 2022, you get 671 days. And if we go from that, and that halfway point is, I think it's the day after the uh, Pentecost. So that Pentecost, of course, is all about the Holy Spirit. And if we go from that halfway point, 672 days, it takes us to April 8th. Uh, And then Strong's 672 means to depart, to go away, depart. So we get two messages here. We get righteousness and depart, and to go away, depart. And then there's a dual message that day. One bride was safely whisked away while another bride in a church was screaming and run away, running away, and there was destruction. And both of these, it was interesting, both of these scenarios happened, you know, immediately after the, the uh, explosion. Okay, there's another story you may or may not be aware of, and this one was November 17th, 2023, latest on crash that damaged historic covered bridge in Bureau County. The landmark red-covered bridge north of Princeton was seriously damaged Thursday morning as uh, as was the truck that hit it. WLPO's Beth Welbers was on the scene. Officials told her the structure had been damaged at least twice in the last two years. There's that 2-2 or possibly 2-0-2. And then in the sign, it says, Caution, low clearance, 11 foot, 10 inches, uh, 10, 11, 23 was 726 on the Hebrew calendar, Harpazo. U.S. highways 6 and 34 pass through nearby Princeton, Illinois. 6 is the number of man. And 334, I think, signifies going from 3 to 4, man walking towards the door or the change of years uh, on Nissan 1 this year, 3 to 4. The bridge is on 1950 East Street, crosses Big Bureau Creek, 1250, reminiscent of Revelation 12.5, the child being caught up. Uh, North Avenue also crosses one of its source tributaries. Built in 1863, the bridge is 160 years old. G160 is sudden, unexpected, sudden. And that's, I believe, will be the way the rapture is. For many, it will be sudden and unexpected. Uh, this is. It's also interesting that the photos were taken here by Mr. Pete 222 uh, and Strong's G222 means of Alexandria and the usage is a native or resident of Alexandria in Egypt and possibly an allusion to Little Egypt. I thought that was kind of interesting. Anyway, the whole thing here is the, the, uh, the idea is that the bridge gets destroyed suddenly. So there's a bridge across water, just like the the uh, ponds, what is it, little uh, bridge and little stream or something like that for the Devil Comet. And here we have the, the theme of a bridge over water that's suddenly destroyed. So there's, there's passage for the rapture and then bam, suddenly that bridge is gone. And we had some stories about Japan. There's a plane crash and fire at Haneda Airport. Japan Airlines plane is on fire on the runway of Haneda Airport on Tuesday, January 2nd in 2024, Tokyo, Japan. Passenger plane collided with a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft and de Havilland uh, Canada-8 introduced in 1984. There's that number again, 84, and burst into flames on the runway of Tokyo's Haneda Airport. The fire is likely to be seen as a key test case for airplane fuselages made from carbon composite fibers, possibly a reference to Carbondale, uh, such as the A350, the 787, and so on. And it says, we don't know much about how composites burn, uh, but interestingly enough, it says here that, um, on the other hand, that fuselage protected passengers from a really horrific fire. It did not burn through for some period of time and let everybody get out. Uh, This was updated at 453. Strong's G453 is foolish, fool, or unwise. Um, Haneda means sacrifice, and five of the six aboard the smaller plane died, five representing grace. 
So this foolish and reference to grace and so on, uh, you know, it kind of it points to a bad a, a harbinger, a bad harbinger. About Japanese religion, religion in Japan is manifested primarily in Shinto and in Buddhism, the two main faiths which Japanese people often practice simultaneously. The level of participation in religious ceremonies as a cultural tradition remains high, especially during festivals and occasions such as the first shrine visit of the New Year. So we're back to the New Year again, and we're looking at the New Year, or the the uh, at least the last day uh, leading up to the New Year, April 8th, as our rapture perspective date. This is kind of sad here. It says, today, 1% to 1.5% of the population are Christians. That's an extremely small percentage, 1 to 1.5% Christian. So this, these could be omens to Japan that they, you know, they need to wake up. Uh, and we need some to have a lot of J- Japanese come to Christ uh, before this rapture. Uh, some more happening to Japan on the Noto Peninsula. They had an earthquake that was that January 1st quake, 7.6, which struck northwest, north northwest of Suzu, located in Noto Peninsula, prefecture, Ishikawa Prefecture, Japan. And it was felt particularly the towns of Suzu, which means bell. And if you recall, the earth rang like a bell five years ago and so on and so forth. I don't think there's any more interesting uh, statistics here, but basically this is, this is a wake-up call. 1-1 to 4-8 is 98 days. G-98 is I shall abide in death. So this, this is not a good omen. 11-11, uh, 2018, when the earth rang like a bell, 11-11, to 4-8, 24 is 1975 days or five, five years and some odd months and days, and that's 1975, and Strong's means come. And then five, of course, is the end of the age of grace. Uh, oh, here's something interesting. Luke 8, 4, and when much people were gathered together and were come, and there's that usage, 1975, to him, out of every city, he spake by a parable, out of every city, that sounds like the rapture, and the number is 8, 4. Uh, 8th of April. And then if you reverse it, you get Luke 4, 8. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So again, a warning, April 8th. Uh, 1, 9, 2024, we had a 6.0 earthquake hit Sado, Japan. Sado, of course, refers to the tea ceremony. The numbers 6 and 19 may represent man and faith respectively. So this is an omen that we need to have the Japanese people uh, need to come to Christ. Some U.S. news. Uh, Lytle Creek. There was a 4.2 magnitude earthquake which hit Lytle Creek on 1.5. Uh, Lytle means little. The numbers 42 and 15 in the Bible mean Antichrist and rest, respectively. The eclipse will pass over littles, including Little Rock, Little Egypt, Little Catalina, and so on. El Centro and Imperial California, they had a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. There's that April 8th, 4.8. Over a dozen shakes registered in Southern California. Uh, The first earthquake, uh, 1236 a.m. El Centro, California, it measured a 4.8 magnitude, blah, blah, blah. From there, earthquakes continued around El Centro and Imperial, two cities located east of San Diego. Um, and then 13 tremors were felt as of 12.53 a.m. So we get two numbers in that. We get 153 big fish and 12.5, the child being caught up. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and some felt had been felt at the office, blah, blah, blah. El Centro means the center possibly a reference to uh, the the earthquake center of the United States in New Madrid, Missouri, and then Imperial, something of unusual size or excellence, and that describes the U.S. 
Now, there's, this is kind of interesting. There is another Carbondale. There's a Carbondale, Colorado. And there was a story on December 11, 2023, where 125 migrants have made their way to Carbondale. The mountain town can't handle them. 125, there's that, uh, that angle that we got from New Jerusalem City. And that also refers to Revelation 12.5, uh, the catching up of, or the harpazo unto God. And one last thing in the news, Wyatt, Texas County issued a disaster declaration for April total solar eclipse. A small county in Texas is bracing for a state of emergency and surprising declaration comes over a month in advance. Hundreds of thousands of eclipse chasers are expected to flock to the south for the total solar eclipse in April. And while eyes will be on the sky, officials in Bell County Texas are worried about the impact here on Earth. Now, if you notice, Bell County includes Temple, uh, and we already went over Temple, Texas, in the eclipses, so the eclipse is going to be total over that. And it's interesting that Bell County makes us, it reminds us of when the Earth rang like a bell, 11 11 2018, five years ago. And five means grace. Okay, April 8th, 2024 is fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign. And uh, Drayton Banyan made a comment, uh, and he's been looking in Pi and all that. And he says, now look what appears at the 5,322nd digit of Pi. And I believe it's four sevens show up. And 4824 is 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 2368 days. Uh, which represents Christ, Jesus Christ. The uh, I think it's the 2368 represents in Greek the numerical value, Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, it re- re- represents Jesus Christ after the first uh, Revelation 12 sign. That's a total of 2389 days. Uh, the number 777 is mentioned directly only once in Genesis 531, and all the days of Lamech, that's Noah's father were 770 and seven years, then he died. So the completion of Lamech's life marked the completion of the pre-flood phase of creation. Uh, After everyone apart from Noah and his family was destroyed, a new phase of life for mankind began. Therefore, the number 777 in the Bible represents completion or fulfillment. So we've got this message of completion and fulfillment on 4824. Uh, and it's also 2389 days from the first Revelation 12 sign. Also, something interesting, 5,322nd digit may have significance in that sundown on 322 of 2023 was the beginning of the one-year timeline at Nissan 1, and the 5 may refer to the end of grace. Strangely, skull and bones also known as the Order or Order 322 or the Brotherhood of Death, (laughs) is an undergraduate senior secret society at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, So is there any connection or do they know something that, uh, know something about it too? I just thought that was an interesting connection. All right. And then some places where we see a reference to this uh, this day of the Lord type thing. Hosea 6, 1 through 4, uh, it talks about after two days he will revive us, on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. And then it makes mention of Ephraim, which is thought to, thought to be USA, and then Judah, Israel. So they naturally there's going to be a transfer of God's uh, focus from the USA to Israel once this rapture happens. But this this always puzzled me that after two days, okay, if a day is as a thousand years to the Lord, then after 2,000 years, he revives us. In other words, he wakes us up. And then on the third day, so he waits another thousand years before he raises us up that we may live in his sight. That never made sense to me. If two days and the third day use the same units and the verses applied to the second and third millennia, this makes no sense. 
However, if we are revived by the signs and so on, or, or awakened after two days, and the third day is taken to mean uh, being raised up on the third day of the eclipses, because it will be the third, uh, third eclipse making up that Aleph Tav over America, uh, then it satisfies both our revival and our being raised up. So could this be speaking of the third day of eclipses? And then in Thessalonians, um, it, uh, it talks about the, for you, you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So this, could this be the one full year, uh, Noah's flood year timeline of signs leading to the rapture event? Could this be the, the could the day of the Lord be that it actually it's one year, 17 days, the length of Noah's flood, but it, is that the day of the Lord that comes in like a thief in the night? For many it will, because I don't think there are going to be very many people that see my video. You know, I, I will, I'll probably let a, a handful of people know, uh, but I, I don't think this is going to go huge and around the world. So there are going to be a lot of people that this is going to come as a thief in the night to. Um, and it's it does sound like it's the day of the Lord, because it's the it's the year that these day counts have been revealed. And then First Thessalonians five three, reminiscent of uh, the one fifty three big fish. Uh, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. So the it sounds like the rapture happens and then the destruction comes. And then of course Revelation eighteen six. Uh, pay her back double. You know, this is, I believe this is talking about perhaps America. And uh, 18 times 6 is 108 days. And that's the number of days between the rapture sign, 1222-23 uh, last year, to the eclipse on 48. And that's all I have for you. That's been a rather long video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the clouds. God bless.